Hi guys, welcome to this the very special edition of uh, Big on Wine uh, as a live stream, just for a change. And of course, um, the uh, we're on the eve of May Day at the moment, and there certainly haven't been too many excuses for celebrating over the past year. But uh, if you've got a celebration coming up uh, tomorrow or uh, at any time during the summer, and you feel like celebrating, I've got just the wine for you. And it's coming right up. Yep, hi guys, welcome to yet another edition of Big On Wine, this time uh, live. And of course, Big On Wine is the channel that brings you news, clues and reviews, as you, I'm sure you all know by now, and of course, our emphasis is on giving you the very best uh, value for money in terms of your wines. Yes, indeed, there haven't been too many opportunities for celebrating over the past year or so, what with the incidents of uh, COVID-19. And of course, the uh, situation here in Europe is gradually coming under control. But of course, uh, across the world, it's uh, indeed speeding up in terms of infections and the terrible situation, of course, in India at the present time. So uh, a kind of a muted, perhaps muted celebrations in order. But uh, yes, we do have the sun shining, or at least where I am, the sun is shining, and uh, a summer is ahead of us. So uh, let me suggest to you um, a sparkling wine to set things in motion, if there is a chance for you to celebrate from now on through the summer. Now, uh, the COVID-19 situation is naturally something that has been worrying us all. Um, I actually went down to the uh, health center uh, a week ago and uh, they said, oh, we'll, we're gonna give you your uh, inoculation now, we're gonna get your vaccine. And I said, oh, what am I gonna be getting? And they said, well, you know, you can choose actually. And I said, well, uh, I would prefer Bollinger, or maybe my second choice would be Moet et Chandon, but they said, no, it's uh, AstraZeneca for you. So no Bollinger, no Moet and Chandon for me. Okay, but it's nice to feel a little safer now that I've been, uh, I've had my vaccine shot. Right, the wine that I've got for you is this one here. Um, let's see whether we can get a shot of it on camera there. Let's turn it up to the camera, that's about it. We can get a quick shot on there, there we go. And the name of the wine is Bestheim Cremant d'Alsace, uh, Brew Premium, that's the name of the beverage there. And of course, uh, this wine does indeed come from uh, France, from North Eastern France. It's a Cremant d'Alsace, it comes from Alsace. Um, Alsace is an area of France up there in the northeast, and of course it has a very long border with um, Germany on both sides of the Rhine, so Baden-Württemberg on the German side, and of course uh, Alsace on the western side of uh, the Rhine there as the Rhine runs north. Um, it's a very, very dry and sunny area of France uh, with an ideal climate for uh, growing particularly um, uh, grapes for uh, white wines and for sparkling wines. And of course, the local speciality is the Cremant, or a, a kind, I suppose, of uh, very, very similar relative to Champagne. So we can't talk about Champagne here, but we can talk about a sparkling wine, which is made in the same way as Champagne, and to all intents and purposes, uh, is just as good as champagne uh, for uh, the majority of us ordinary wine drinking folks. Um, the wine is uh, actually classified as being a brew wine. Now this has got, um, if I remember correctly, nine grams of um, residual sugar, uh, which if this was in, indeed was an ordinary, uh, ordinary white wine, this would actually be close on the off-dry category, but uh, traditionally in sparkling wines, the uh, sugar content is slightly higher. So this classifies, this classif classifies as a brew or a dry uh, sparkling wine. Now I've already poured myself a glass of this wonderful beverage. Here she is. And of course, um, 
you know, if we take a look at the, the wine in the glass, it looks absolutely fantastic. Look at those bubbles there. Absolutely lovely. The wine in question is made by a cooperative and uh, officially designated as Appellation Controle Crémant d'Alsace. And uh, the cooperative that makes this particular wine is uh, based roughly 10 kilometers north of the town of Colmar. Uh, in a very, very small place called Benvir, um, which is, what, a commune of, of roughly, what, 1,300 or so people. And the German border is naturally relatively close. Um, it's roughly, what, 30 kilometers or so east of Benvir. Made by a cooperative, um, and the cooperative actually has an interesting makeup there is actually well over 400 different wine producing families who are actually producing wines that are uh, marketed under the best heim name so you won't actually find best time on the map but if you look for the village or the commune of benvia you'll uh, find the place where this is all put together Okay, so I do stress this is a sparkling wine. It's not champagne, even though the method is the traditional champagne method. Um, and the grapes in question here um, are the, if I remember correctly, are the Pinot Blanc and the Auxerrois grapes. So it's made uh, from two very, very French, uh, French grapes here. Pinot Blanc is a personal favorite of mine. Okay, let's um, take a look at the wine in the glass. And as we can see, let's lift it up a bit higher there. There we go. And as we can see, we've got uh, a large amount of tight bubbles in the wine. I always like my bubbles to be uh, multiple and extremely small. That normally gives some indication of a quality sparkler. And the general um, color of the wine, as we can see, is a kind of a what even lighter than a straw gold, probably more in the, in the direction of platinum here uh, in the glass. So uh, looks extremely nice indeed. Let's take a little sniff of the wine and see um, what we can find here. Here we go. Okay, now in the nose, um, fruity, um, toasty, um, something which is rather unusual as almost a kind of, in addition to the toastiness, there's a kind of nuttiness to this uh, particular sparkling wine as well. Taters, the uh, aroma is extremely pleasant indeed. Um, what kind of, what are we getting in terms of fruit? Um, it appears rather a kind of a sweet fruit aroma, even though we know that this wine is, is brew, it's a dry wine, um, but the aromas are certainly quite sweetish. So let's say mature fruit, uh, what we, what, let's try and give them a name. Certainly some apple in there. And why not also some... Mm, yeah, I think the apple is probably... It's a yellow apple, not green apple. It's a very, very mature Swedish apple. Um, and some, some citrus, of course, in there as well. So toastiness, nuttiness, uh, apple and uh, citrus, but very, very mature um, aromas on this wine. Okay, let's um, now taste this wine and uh, see how we get on. Let's see whether uh, those uh, aromas are uh, mirrored in the flavors as well. Looks extremely good in the glass, I have to say. Here we go. Now that, of course, is excellent. This is, um, how would I describe it? I think I would describe this as a medium bodied sparkler. Um, toasty uh, in, the, uh, in the palate. Uh, the flavors are very much the same as the aromas. Perhaps the matureness of the fruit is not quite so prominent as in the nose. Let's take, a take another taste. Yeah, toasty, but also a sort of a, a creaminess there as well, which is a very, very um, pleasant. 
citrus fruit to the main. Um, the apple flavors are perhaps not quite as mellow as in the nose, but certainly apple and citrus in there as well. It's a very, very harmonious uh, looking wine. It's very nicely balanced. There's a lovely balance of fruit and acid here. Even a touch, I think, in the back of the mouth is maybe some plum flavors as well. Yes, indeed. And also, if I'm not mistaken, there's that kind of aroma and maybe even taste that you get when you walk into a bakery and taste a piece of fresh bread, a lovely kind of um, toasty, doughy, sweetish, sourish kind of aroma. I can't put it any better than that, but extremely nice balance to this particular wine here. All right, now uh, what's the serving temperature? Well, the serving temperature for a wine of this nature has to be pretty low. So put it in the fridge for, you know, a couple of hours before you uh, consume it. You're looking for a temperature which is only just slightly above um, refrigerator temperature. So I would be saying something like seven, eight degrees for preference. That would be my um, my particular take on the temperature. So make sure it's well chilled before you serve it. What are we going to be enjoying this with? Well, I think uh, if we're looking in terms of food pairings, we're looking in terms of what? Fish, um, seafood, chicken, uh, veggie dishes, salad, anything green and summery really will do. In fact, if I'm being perfectly honest, this is a drink for any time with practi practically any uh, dish indeed. But of course, particularly, particularly appropriate, I think, outdoors and in the summer. And if you have a celebration, family celebration or wedding, this makes an excellent choice. This wine, this sparkling wine comes in for just over 13 euro. I'll repeat that, just over 13 euro a bottle where I am. It's an absolute bargain. Okay, um, that's my review of this. And uh, let's quickly uh, give you those little messages again. Okay, let me give you my rating on this particular wine. Now, this is uh, best time, Cremant d'Alsace uh, Brew Premium. As I say, where I am coming in for just over 13 euro, euro a bottle, an absolute snip at that particular price. Serve it cold. Um, this has got absolutely wonderful balance. It's produced by a very, very well-known and highly reputed cooperative there near Colmar in uh, France's Alsace. It has toastiness, it has minerality, it has wonderful acid, tight bubbles, it's harmonious. And, you know, if you are looking for a sparkling wine for pretty much any occasion, you can't go wrong with this particular wine. The uh, best time Cremant d'Alsace at Brew Premium, I'm giving four stars plus out of five. Okay. That uh, rounds off my little review, and of course, uh, I'll be back again next week uh, with another great wine of the week for you. This has been Tony Melville, Facebook Live, um, with uh, the Cremant d'Alsace, a lovely drink. Signing off now and wishing you, of course, a very sunny summer and uh, an end to the pandemic. And of course, if you're enjoying uh, May the 1st tomorrow, then very, very a happy May Day, and as the Finns say, Hiva Vapua. Bye for now.